Well, joining us now is the founder of Standing for Women, the one and only wonderful Kelly J. Keane. Kelly, I mean, look, you have been at the coal face of this argument. You have been hounded, you've been attacked, you've been abused, you've been called all sorts of names, you've had the police called on you. And actually, frankly, the people who the, the police should be knocking on the doors of, and not just those who sat there in silent tyranny and allowed this industrial child abuse to happen, but those who actively not just propagandized it but censored people like you who called it out from the start they should be facing like serious investigation surely well look i got in trouble a long time ago in 2018 was the first time that i was interviewed by the british police for saying that susie green who was the ceo of mermaids had taken her child for his 16th birthday which was quite a gift uh, to have his genitals removed, basically. I called it castration because that's what it is. Um, and I had the police at my door. And yet that woman has had no police attention for actually taking her child, a minor, um, to Thailand to have that surgery. So I think there's a lot of ideological capture. Um, I see it in the police force. I see it in every state-run institution. We are going to have to unbake this particular cake. And I really do want some heads. I, I want plenty of people, Polly Carmichael, for example, at the Tavistock. I want all the doctors. And I'm telling you, they all knew. You know, it's, it's, it's just not good enough to pretend that everybody was just following orders and they thought they were doing something kind. No, no, no. Everybody knew exactly what they were doing when they were prescribing those pills to those children and mutilating their bodies irreversibly. They knew what they were doing. And maybe they were cowards to organisations such as Mermaids who had far too much influence, um, especially over our beloved BBC. So there's just been a mass grooming of this nation to accept absolute vile, destructive harm upon very vulnerable children. Uh, yeah, Kelly J, great to have you on board. Uh, you know, I, I would say that uh, in years to come, we will look back on the dark days of the Tavistock Clinic Let's not forget that's an NHS uh, uh, organisation uh, where the locals, I'm one of the locals, I live near there, the locals always called that place Frankenstein's Castle because it was where children went to get mutilated. The fact that medically qualified grown adults were doing this to children, to my mind, is just astonishing. I don't know how it happened. Uh, people like you were still small voices of common sense in the middle of this madness. Uh, uh, we're talking about mermaids. Uh, um, uh, J.K. Rowling said that mermaids repeat repeatedly claimed puberty blockers are reversible. They are not. That's half the problem. You give these life-changing drugs to confused kids, unbelievable, which will completely change the rest of their lives. Uh, they sent out breast binders to girls as young as 13. Uh, and insisted that unless children are affirmed in their trans identities, they would kill themselves. All total rubbish. My point is, you and, and a few other impressive fellow campaigners has, have been these voices of sanity in the middle of this madness, but it looks to me now, in the wake of the CAS report, and what people are saying about the Tavistock Clinic, the fact that the Tavistock Clinic is being closed down, it looks to me as if you are beginning to win the war. Do you feel that way? Oh, I feel we're nearly victorious with one very small battle. But, you know, that it, it's still that, that you're going to have uh, penises in, in women's changing rooms. It's still going to be taught in schools. So I think the CAS review is remarkable. We're better off since it was published than we were before, but it's nowhere near far enough as far as I'm concerned. I really, look, Chelsea and Westminster Hospital in London, they are setting up a clinic to do phalloplasty on a mass scale. I'm talking to the number of like over a hundred in one year. Um, and if your viewers don't know what phalloplasty is, it's a pretend uh, penis stitched on, usually quite like Frankenstein, um, to a female. Uh, so. There's, there's still so much things called gender, which I think is a nonsense anyway, and gender dysphoria, gender identity, all those things, they just need to go now. And I've look, I've no doubt that this war will be won uh, by those of us who want to uh, retain women's rights, women's language, and the safety of children. 
and the autonomy of children's bodies to be able to grow into healthy adult bodies. Um, I think we will win this, but I fear that uh, the storm is is still very much um, pouring down upon us all and, and, and we're nowhere near the end. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the, the phalloplasty thing because it reminds me of one very important finding, I think, in the CAS report, which pointed out something that you know people like you and I have known for a long time, which is gender dysphoria has historically always been largely a male psychological condition. And yet, the vast majority of those presenting to clinics, such as the Tavistock, happened to be girls, girls who were lesbian, girls who were uh, neurodivergent, girls who had depression, girls who might otherwise be self-harming. It's not largely gender dysphoria, a female condition. And one thing the CAS report stated is we've now entered this extremely toxic period in civilization, the Kardashian culture, culture with a K as I like to call it, where girls are hypersexualized, they're groomed online, life looks far better as a guy, quite frankly. They've either got to look like a sex doll, send naked pictures at the age of 13, be hounded by creepy men, uh, and we're, not, we're still not talking about this element, which the CAS report itself lays bare as a huge contributing factor to this disaster pornography i think pornography is is kind of the poison that that really um propelled this whole idea about disassociating from your body or wanting to disassociate and i just want to say on the gender dysphoria the whole term uh, the medical diagnosis i just i just want to say very publicly i think it's all nonsense um i think we have and i think if if the last few years of diagnostics have shown us that people will just give labels of gender dysphoria, often these are trauma responses. Um, even if the trauma is just wanting to fit in, some of the girls, like you said, were had autism diagnosis, it, diagnoses. And for those girls uh, not fitting in, they wanted to make the choice not to fit in. So they opted out of being a girl because it was easier to opt out being a girl than to be pushed out from uh, being accepted in girl circles. So I think we, you know, we've so far to go. I, I really want an end to the word gender. I think that should be removed from all public bodies, all, uh, nobody should be using it in parliament. I think the idea that gender and sex are different and that we have this sort of ethereal concept of what we might be in comparison to what we actually are. I think that needs to go. I think there are so many themes that that sort of poured into this scandal um, and gender dysphoria is definitely one of those. It's it's um, just it's just not real. I know, uh, Kelly, and one of the, your great victories is uh, even Police Scotland now say that if you want to call a trans woman a bloke in a skirt, that is not illegal. It might upset them, but, you know, being offensive, what the hell? And that's the same in England and the same in Wales. Uh, that's down to you, and uh, you've done a great job, Amazing, as you well, say. Thanks. Still work to do, uh, but here's Never to stop. you. Thank you very much, Kelly. Thank great you, to Kelly talk Jane. to you.